So the last two days we have been given variable, uh, we've been given problems that require us to find s uh, the square root of numbers. We've had rational square roots where the square root always ends up being a whole number answer two days ago. And yesterday we had irrational square roots where we had square roots that didn't end up in whole answers and so whole numbers. So you had a whole number times a square root. Just to go one step further, we are now going to have variable expressions inside the square root bracket. That means you will have letters inside the square root to certain powers. And we're going to have to find the simplest radical form of these answers. Um, calculators, in this case, uh, will again give you approximate answers for the numbers. But your calculator is not going to be terribly helpful when you're stuck with the variable inside the square root. So you're welcome to use your calculator to, to uh, figure out factor pairs for the numbers. But it's not going to really get you to a final answer. All right, so we have, as our very basic question right here, we have the square root of 400 times z to the sixth. So we're going to break this apart. We're going to break it apart so that we just have the square root of 400 times the square root of z to the sixth. So we're going to split it along the number and letter divide. So we're going to look at the square root of 400, and then we're going to look at the square root of 6. Square root of 400. What perfect square factor goes into 400? Ethan? 104. 104. Now the fun thing about 104 is they're both perfect squares. So we're going to end up, I think 400 might be a perfect square too. But I like that you broke it apart. 100 times what is the square root of 100? 10. What is the square root of 4? 2. 2. So now let's look at the square root of z to the 6th. So this is what this is really asking. This is saying z to the 6th is equal to something, I don't know what, squared. Well, what times itself is equal to z to the 6th? z to the third. So that means, that means, if we were to do the, the square root of z to the third squared, the square root of z to the third squared is going to be z to the third, because you take the square root of something squared, and it, yeah, it essentially cancels each, each other out, so we get z to the third. So the square root of z to the sixth is z to the third. So 10 times 2 times z to the third is equal to 20 z to the third. And so that is your final answer. And this one did end up being a whole number answer. Not too bad. So if we were to look at the next one, now I know that 162 is not a perfect square. It is not a perfect square. So we're going to have to break this apart again into the square root of 162 and the times the square root of y to the 12th. So let's deal with the number first since you've been dealing with these for a while. What goes into 162 that is a perfect square? Nolan, no, Nolan's giving me the 4 symbol. Maybe. All right. I think 4 is going to go in there. And so, well, no, 4 is not going to go into that, actually. No, that's because 62 is not divisible by 4. Mm -hmm. Yes? Six? 6 goes in 27 times, but 6 and 27, neither of them are perfect squares. So that, I mean, we can do it that way. But it would end up being a little bit extra work. Olivia? Nine. nine. Let's try nine. So we have the square root of nine. So uh, nine goes into 16 once. <coughs> Carry the uh, seven. Uh, nine goes into that 18, uh, eight times. So, so I, I carried the seven and 72. So nine goes into 72 
18 times. Can I get someone with a calculator to verify that? Okay, it's good. All right, so what is the square root of 9? 3. Times, uh, does 18 have any perfect square factors? No. Nine. Ah, nine. So we have the square root of nine times the square root of two. two. What is the square root of nine? Three. Three. So we have three times three times the square root of two. Now, the square root of y squared, or y to the twelfth. Again, this is saying y to the twelfth is equal to something, I don't know what that something is yet, squared. We need to sort of do this mentally first. So what times itself is equal to y to the 12th? Twice. Um, y to the 6th. Y to the 6th. Uh, for those people who haven't figured it out yet, essentially we're just taking this and dividing it by 2. That is pretty much what we're doing. All right. <coughs> so what is the square root of y <coughs> to the 6th squared? Y to the 6th. It is equal to y to the 6th. So therefore, the square root of y to the 12th is? Y to the 6th. So let's multiply these things together. Typically, you put the uh, term in the square root in the back. So we have 3 times 3 times y to the 6th. What is 3? That's 9y to the 6th times the square root of 2. And there we have our answer. We can't do anything else with it. All right. So I'm going to clear these off. We're going to take a look at the next uh, four examples. Hopefully we can go a little bit quicker because you're starting to see some connections. All right. What are we going to have to do with this trinomial in order to figure this problem out? We're going to have to factor it. For us to uh, deal with a factored trinomial inside a, a square root bracket, it's, it's going to probably need to be a squared binomial, isn't it? Yeah. So, so this is going to be equal to the square root of n squared. Oops, sorry. n plus 10 squared. I heard you say squared. I wrote the squared n plus 10 squared. What is the square root of n plus 10 squared? N plus 10. It's just n plus 10. Because the <coughs> square root of anything squared this essentially cancels each other out, and we just get that term left over. So here's our final answer. That one's pretty quick and, and simple. All right. So let's take a look at this one. This one's a, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to move on to this one right here. And then I'm going to come back to this one last. So here we have the square root of this term here. I'm going to move up, give myself some more room. So what goes into 384 that is a perfect square? What goes into 384 that's a perfect square? Let's start simple. Let's start simple. Uh, 84. What goes into 84? Four. Four. Do you have a bigger one, Colin? Yeah, six does. It gives you 64. Okay, but six, six and 64? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have, and 64 is a perfect square. And we have the square root of six. Now, the square root of six we can't do a whole lot with, can we? Because it, its factors are three and two, one and six. No perfect squares there. So what is the square root of 64? 8. So we have 8 times the square root of 6. But wait, we have done nothing with this j to the 5th. j is for Joe, by the way. All right. So here's the trick. When we had z to the 6th and y to the 12th, we just divided it by 2, didn't we? And we, had, we, we found the square root of it. Well, that's all fine and dandy when we're dealing with even numbers because they're divisible by 2. But 5 is not divisible by 2, is it? So what can we break j to the fifth power into that would give us something that we could find the square root to? Think back to your warm-up. Uh, Betsy? J to the fourth. Ah, j to the fifth is equal to j to the fourth 
times j to the first, right? So therefore, the square root of j to the fifth is equal to the square root of j to the fourth times the square root of j to the first. Well, what is the square root of j to the fourth? Two. So we have j squared times the square root of j. And so now we need to combine these two pieces together. Well, 8 times j squared is just 8j eight eight squared. squared. Square root of 6 times the square root of j is just the square root of 6j. J. And there's our answer. So the trick with this one is when you are given a variable to an odd power, you need to split it into its largest possible even power times something to the first, <coughs> to, times the variable to the first. This you can take the square root of because you can divide the squared, the even number by two and it gets a nice even uh, exponent. And uh, th there you have it. The only trick with this one is, uh, bec with odd exponents, you can end up with uh, an odd number. So you need to verify that uh, the, the number is positive. And normally they write uh, an, an absolute value bracket between the odd power, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay? All right. So that is a lot so far.